Hello, everybody, and welcome by a new episode of the Follow Your Passion podcast. And today I have again another special guest. His name is Matthew Taylor. And he's a very special guest because he's not directly an entrepreneur, but he's uh, working at the state of Georgia. And but he has a very great passion. And what the fear of a lot of people is, is his greatest passion, and that's speaking in public. And when you talk about, uh, when you talk with him, uh, you'll notice it in a few seconds. He is very passionate about that. So welcome, uh, Matt. Thank you for being here. How are you Thank doing? You. I'm doing great, Erwin. Thank you for asking. Perfect. So could you share again the, the story you, you shared with me earlier about how it came that you was inspired to start speaking in public? Sure. Yes. I, as, as you mentioned, Erwin, I have been with the state of Georgia or the same agency for a little over 16 years. When I started back back at that time in the 06, 06 07 timeframe, the commissioner we had at that time had an amazing gift for speaking. Whenever we would have a, a staff meeting regard or a, just a, a small group session, regardless of the size, when the gentleman opened his mouth, the entire audience was completely engaged and connected. He had just this phenomenal charisma that anything he said, there was just a connection and a, a, a certain mesmerizing effect about him. And my response immediately was, someday I want to be like him. Now, Please understand, I'm not saying I want to be the commissioner for an agency, but to have that gift where when you're speaking, people are listening. Just having that engagement. So thankfully, as time went on, and it was only maybe a, maybe a year or two down the road, I had the opportunity to stumble upon an organization known as Toastmasters, Toastmasters International. Now, at that time, they were known to have a lot of clubs that were considered corporate clubs because we worked in the office all day long. So it was very common. You could go on your lunch break to attend a club meeting. There was a former colleague of mine at the time had told me about Toastmasters. Now, I'd heard the name before, but it was not something I really had connected with. I did not know they were about public speaking. And he told me that's mm -hmm. what it's all about, Matt. You you stand in front of a group of people, you speak, you're given feedback. So people are monitoring what you say. And, and it's not meant to be critical. It's just meant to help you become a better speaker. And I realized that's right up my alley. So I started doing that. And my... I had to do it anyway, because with my job, we've got to do a lot of presentations to executive mm -hmm. leadership. But having an organization like that, where you're constantly working on speaking and constantly working on getting better and better, that made me soar when it came to presenting at the job. And people would say, Matt, how did you become such a wonderful speaker? <laughs> I just told them, this is what happened. Yeah. But in the process, Erwin, it made me realize how enjoyable speaking is, how, how rewarding it is. And coming across people in my journey that have struggled with it, I tell them anybody can be a public speaker. It's just a matter of practicing what you've got to do. I've got a good formula on what you got to do to become better. But that that's my story. That's how I, I got to where I'm at at this point. Yeah, nice. So b before you uh, got acquainted with Toastmasters and starting to work on your uh, speaking capabilities, um, according to several researchers, public speaking is one of the biggest fears of people. How, how was it for you? Did you also were afraid of what people thought about you or how did you come across the, the room or... Yes. To answer your question, Erwin, yes. And actually, it goes back even further. As a kid, I hated 
when the teacher would have us stand in front of the classroom to present something. It scared the tar out of me. And it didn't go away. Even when I was in college, I would be scared whenever I was in the front of the room doing doing some speaking. And it's interesting enough you 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 mentioned that because my boss actually told me that many years ago that the two greatest fears people have first the fear of dying but second is public speaking so it made sense that I would be nervous and I would be scared yeah but that's when I learned if this is something that I I want to pursue which as I mentioned with that that former commissioner many years ago, having that gift, if that is something I aspire to get to, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to to go through the blood, sweat, and tears, so to speak, of yeah, what yeah, that yeah. will entail. Because, yeah, many times I'd be nervous, I'd trip over my words, but it was just a matter of, of keeping at it. And, and being consistent with it, Erwin. It's one thing when I might have a big presentation the next week or so that I've got to do and I've got to practice for it, but I've got to keep that up. And not just after the presentation's done, I've got to keep that up because you never know when you might be on the elevator and you've got some big wig asking you about a project you're working on. And as we say in Toastmasters, impromptu speaking, You've got to be able to deliver that on the spot. But by keeping with the 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 practice and, and working on other speeches that you do, you can do that. Definitely. And that helps overcome those those pitfalls that 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 you're asking about. Yeah, nice. And if you look at uh, nowadays when you have to give a speech or whatever, do you still feel some fear or is it being replaced by like excitement? And actually, to answer your, to your question, Erwin, it's both. Uh, and I learned, that's the thing I learned some time back, is that fear, regardless of how seasoned a public speaker you are or how new a speaker you are, you are always going to feel nervous. But that nervousness, that that fear, that's simply adrenaline. When your body is in a situation that is is uncomfortable, you're in front of a group of people you don't know, your body is going to respond a certain way. But to answer that second part, Erwin, when I said it's both, that, that it's twofold. As you've practiced and as you become more seasoned as a speaker, you can channel that fear and turn it into, into energy, as I call it, anxiety into energy positive energy and that energy yeah. is going to give you that extra boost mm -hmm. to be able to lay down those points that you want to lay down yeah nice nicely put uh matt but you've been trained to do that so that's impromptu uh <laughs> presenting right <laughs> yes sir <laughs> yeah so um i love to uh to use uh i love to to play with language right and if you're talking about fear, you know, it's they say it's an acronym for uh, false evidence appearing real or face everything and rise. And I think what you just said, you know, if you look at the, the, the whole concept, it's it's adrenaline, you know, building up. And I remember when I used to compete in judo that I had it with every uh, every competition, right? Just sure. before that, I couldn't eat anything before the, the, the competition started because I had to go to the restroom. Sure. I, and and afterwards, uh, we could we could go to the Chinese restaurant, eat every every dish from the map, right? And no issue whatsoever. But it's sure. this adrenaline that that's building up, that that's making all your senses active and uh, working on high speed, so you can deliver a great performance. Right. Yes, sir. Fear is it. Fear is not. Um, you can't touch it. Right. It's right. not the the physical process in your body. It's what we call fear. But if you would call it excitement for the same process, the same adrenaline, mm -hmm. it gets a totally different uh, meaning. Yes. And that's 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 beautiful, right? It is beautiful. Yes, fear is not a bad thing. It is just the, a body's simple response 
but you have that power to be able to channel it appropriately. So I'm sure Erwin and your when you were doing your judo, you use that to just um get that kick better or that throw better, just that it just gave you that extra boost to to do the matches you gotta do it, I'm sure. Exactly. Yeah, and even now when, when I have to, to, to speak in public or give a presentation or workshop, you know, sure. I'm looking forward to it. Sure. And I sure. think uh, I, I was wondering because you're now also uh, a seasoned presenter, I would say. Mm -hmm. Um how you consider this when I get to go for a presentation or a, a speaking or a workshop or whatever. I always focus on the audience mm -hmm. because I always say that people listen to the favorite radio station, what's it, uh, W I I F M what's in it for me. Sure. And you should tune into their radio station. So what's in it for them. So whenever I'm on stage somewhere for workshop or training or whatever, um, I never think about myself. I'm always thinking about how can I add value to the people that have taken their time to, to listen to me, to, to come to this presentation. So sure. my focus is always on the audience, which make it a lot easier. Sure. Right? If you've created a presentation and you forget something to mention, who knows? You're the only one, right? That's right. So the audience doesn't know if you miss something, if you made a mistake or whatsoever. Maybe yeah. even if you make a mistake. Um they might think it's part of the presentation. That's right. And actually, that's another thing I tell people. If you if you continue practicing and you become a, a seasoned enough speaker or presenter, just keeping that practice up, you're going to have your own style of speaking, your own style of presenting. So if, if something like that does happen where you do – make a mistake it's not going to be noticeable because you're you're so you have that level of confidence that's engaging that audience so you have a like a little cushion to fall back on if something like that does occur so to yeah. answer your question <laughs> yeah do you also have this um this is saying that five percent of your communication are the words you're using uh, about 17%, I think, or 35% is about your intonation, the, the loudness of your voice, stuff like that. And 55% is your uh, nonverbal communication, right? Your nonverbal language. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Do you also train it with Toastmasters? Yes, because, you know, you were mentioning, Erwin, with uh, when you present and you speak to an audience, it's it's about the audience because you want to be engaging them. You want to get your get your points across. And with with Toastmasters, we talk a lot about with eye contact, how that is that is vital. And again, going with that fifty five percent that that you're speaking on, making making eye contact, but not just which is easy to do looking at one person. No, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta share that eye contact and, and share it across the room and making, making the, having the gestures with it where you're in, in so that way you're including everybody yeah, yeah. with, with what you're speaking on. So yes, we, we do emphasize those nonverbals very, very much. It's important. Nice. nice. So if you think back of it, what is the, best memory you have of giving a presentation yourself of course yes the best memory for me or when when i gave a presentation was it would be about six years ago uh, i was in 2017 and ironically enough it was a, a presentation to a commissioner of course a later commissioner down the road uh but my journey with the with the state at, at the at the time mm-hmm what makes it so memorable, Erwin, is it was at that point I realized I've got my own style of speaking. I tell people that too. I can't tell you when you'll get to that point where you just – you. we talk about how you know who you are. Mm -hmm. Well, as a speaker, there comes a point you know what your style is. You know how you deliver. And it was just – 
when the when the meeting started and I was laying out the slides to the to the commissioner and the other executives, I realized in my head, I've this is my style of speaking. I have my way of delivery, I have my way of communicating. It all fits. And I've always I've never forgotten that for that reason. And nice. of course it was a great presentation, but it was because I realized who I was. I know who I am as a public speaker. <laughs> nice, nice. Great memory. And do you do you go back to that moment sometimes when you're preparing yourself for a new presentation? I do. Because it's what I remind myself as well. It, I, it takes me back there because sometimes you don't, you, you've got to plan and recognize that not everything will go as planned. There might be a mishap. And what made this, this particular situation interesting and a little different was we actually had multiple individuals that were going to be doing presentations. It wasn't just me. We normally don't do it that way. It's usually one at a time, but it was the end of our, our what we call our fiscal year. And we had to get all our, our presentations gone through so we could get the approval to move forward with what we yeah. had to do. So there was, there was three of us that were presenting that day. And because of that, you had multiple different PowerPoint presentations that you were, you were, handing out packages the, the packets and you didn't want to get them mixed up and what was in the the big thing that jumped out was the director who was the basically the supervisor for my my unit in my division he had the wrong presentation when oh. when it was my turn i was going last and he was sitting next to me and he's he's trying to look for the information I'm speaking on. And of course, I've already started my my delivery, so I don't want to just stop and say, this is what you got to do. But because, again, being that I was very comfortable in the situation, I'm in comfortable with myself as a communicator and a speaker. I was very easily able to just go to the correct pile of presentations, take it from my right hand, put it on the left hand. Nudge Lee, tap him on the shoulder, hand him the presentation while I'm still speaking to the commissioner. And I was able to get my point across to him completely non-verbally, but not make it look obvious as I was as I was presenting. Nice. So it's things like that. There could be things you gotta re look out for, reach out for, but you can't you can't let that stop you. But but con continuing to practice and be prepared, you can you can compensate accordingly. Yeah, definitely. And I love what you said, because uh, when I started working for myself eight years ago as a hypnotherapist, you use scripts, right, to, to run a certain process. And yeah. later on, you learn that a, a script isn't very useful because every person is unique. So you they need are. to work. If there's one thing I know for sure is that every session doesn't go as planned, Right. So right. you need to be able to flexible to 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 be in the moment and react on that. That's and right. I remember that when I was a pre-sales consultant, I gave several presentations, but all the presentations were about the concept that I created, right? And I was I was telling them why all those component uh, components were in the in the uh, solution and the overview. And always had the idea. I gave a great presentation, but the account manager that asked me to give the presentation. He was never sure. So I thought, yeah, I missed something. I did a training and for the training to be selected, you had to get, have a pre-talk with a coach. And the coach asked me this very simple, but very uh, profound question, I would say, is when you're giving the presentation, is the goal of the presentation, is it that you're presenting the solution, the technical solution you've proposed? Or is the goal of the presentation that your client will feel at ease to deliver his problem in your hands and you take care of it? Right. And of course, if you put it like that, it's a rhetorical question, but it made total sense to me. And he told me that um, when I would give the presentation, I would use all the knowledge I had about the heart, but it was more like a monologue, right? Sure. Well, he said, you know, 
he, he shared with me that he was uh, playing the saxophone as a hobby, right? And he loved to play solos. Okay. He said, if I would ask you to play a solo, you've already composed the whole solo in your head, in your mind. And the moment you miss one note, it stops because you don't know how to proceed, right? Right. And it doesn't sound natural. It sounds artificial. Okay. He said, what I learned with with uh, playing the saxophone and, and teaching or, or learning it, he said, you, first you learn how to play and then you learn to let go. He said, and if I would play a solo, I'm in the moment, I play a certain note, the next one follows. And he's just like he's trusting his subconscious to do the, the, the next thing, right? And he could sure. play a solo for hours and it would sound great. And I think that applies to a lot of things, right? If if you're if there's one thing you know, you should the, the presentation should be. Uh, if we're talking about PowerPoint, it should be in backup. It should not be the whole story. That's right. Right. Exactly. There's, there's this Belgian uh, comedian who made uh, a, a wonderful uh, YouTube video about. Um, death by PowerPoint, I would say. You know, he, he, he made a presentation how Martin Luther King would have presented his dream nowadays using PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. I've and heard that. <laughs> it missed everything, right? Yeah. And I think that's the great thing about, about great speakers is they don't need any tools, I would say. Yeah. Right. It's it's their appearance. It's a voice, and that's all you need. That's right. So true. So, do you have any persons that you admire? Just because uh, you already mentioned uh, the first one, but are there any other people that inspire you for uh, improving yourself as a speaker? I would. Yes. Uh, in answer to that question, I would I credit my boss. I have been fortunate to have the same boss for 15 of the 16 years that I've worked where I've worked. And he is one has always pushed me. I've and it's initially, don't get me wrong, in the beginning, I found him tough because I was like, man, this is. This is what we're asked to do. I see how others are doing it. So aren't we okay at this? And he'd be like, Matt, no, we can do better. We can, we can, we can go that extra mile. And doing that put me in, helped me de develop and, and, and firm just some very good habits that have pushed me to go that extra mile. And that went nice. with when you yes that 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 went with whenever I'm meeting with with individual or individuals of a higher level in the agency, always treat that session as an opportunity to show them the value that you provide. And having done that over the years, I've come to really appreciate my boss for that because I look back and I I even look now at. Some people who deliver and present really good, some not as much. And I know that's why my boss wanted me. He knew I had that potential. He knew I had the, the talent to be able to go further and to be able to, to, to be the best. And I can s safely say at this point, at the level of management that I sit at now, I'm definitely the best in what I do. And it's because of him. He's a big part of that pushing I, me forward and like i said because it involves so much speaking that helped me realize the the gift and love i have for for public speaking nice um you know that that if you're talking about speaking that storytelling you know it's art itself and it you bring it with emotion and involvement and getting the the audience engaged Mm -hmm. Are you able to use your storytelling capabilities in your work as well? Because sometimes they're just, I would almost say, as we would say in the dry figures, right? When you have to sure. present something, 
but are you still able to deliver it in such a way that the orders are, uh, I won't say mesmerized, but at least engaged and understand what, what message you're getting across? Sure. Absolutely, Erwin. Since I've been with the organization for as long as I have, I sometimes tell people I've seen it all. <laughs> as we, a lot of pe different leaders have come through, we've had multiple governors come through at this point of the state of Georgia. I've seen a lot. So whenever we're in a meeting where there might be something suggested, there might be an idea that we're told is being considered, I feel very comfortable responding appropriately with why that idea might or might not work. And I can give my reason as to why. And there, go, there comes the story. X number of years back, when we had a similar situation, this was the strategy that was used. Again, I'm able to then emphasize if that was a strategy that worked, I emphasized how so and how that would relate to today. But if it didn't work, I'm able to really foot stomp. This is why that would not work today. And so, yes, sir, when storytelling, it's it's such a very vital part because I've been around long enough. I can I can trace back something similar and talk about what happened because chances are a lot of the, at least a fair number of people in the room weren't in the agency when that occurred. So I have to deliver that story appropriately. <laughs> nice. Nice. So if you would, you know, it's hard to look into the future, but do you have any aspirations to develop yourself even more or maybe leave a legacy and train others to become better or? Yes, sir. I do. Uh, because, and it goes back to when we were when we were speaking earlier about the 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 fear people have of public speaking. I would like to be one who can help people and assist people in being able to overcome that fear they have. Because I am, I was not born having the gift of public speaking. And that's the motto I have is anybody can become a public speaker. You just have to go by these certain strategies to get yourself better. I know a lot of people have that fear and I would like to be someone who can help as many people as possible overcome that fear and, and help them see in themselves They've got that capability and they can do it. I came from somebody, as I mentioned, I avoided having to speak in front of the classroom. If there was a group project and someone was called upon to deliver the status or to speak for the group, I never raised my hand because I wanted someone else to do it. But you can overcome that. You can become a speaker, you can become someone who comfortably delivers in front of a group of people. Is it easy? Absolutely not. But we pursue what we want to what we want to pursue. We overcome what we want to overcome, and it can be done. Definitely. You know, it's 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 what I also say with when you're talking about the subconscious mind, right? It wants to take care of you, wants to protect you and keep you safe. And the easiest way to to deliver that um, is to keep you in your own uh, comfort zone, right? Yes, sir. Uh, because all outcomes in your comfort zone are more or less predictable, right? Yes, they because are. Because you've already done it and you know what the outcome uh, most likely will be. And the moment you step out of your comfort zone, the, the outcome, uh, the results of that action are not known yet because it's new, it's out of your comfort zone. So you can face a, uh, some some pores from your subconscious to get you back in your comfort zone again. But it's yes. this intrinsic motivation, this this purpose sometimes, what you recognize is, in, but this is what I truly want. So yes. that's when your courage comes in, right? Feel the fear and right. anyway. That's and right. You learn it's not as bad as you thought it was. That's right. And then I'm going to add to that 
Erwin, it's a work in process. It's a work in progress. Do I, are there times that even in if we're in a at the office and we're with a group of people, we're, we're divided into groups and they want someone to present, I'll admit and within the past couple of years, I've still been shy when it comes to raising my hand, but I push myself to do that now. So when that opportunity comes, who will speak? I'm raising my hand. I, I'll still feel nervous about it, but I'm going to do it because I'm pushing myself to do it. So it's something you always, you will always work on, but if you keep doing it, you're going to get better and better at it. Definitely. Definitely. Um, so do you have any speaking engagements uh, in the near future? I do not have any speaking engagements going on right now. It's been, I've, I've recently found a, a wonderful agent who's in the process of, 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 of booking some opportunities for me. So I have not, I, I've, I've got a pretty clear calendar at this point, but I am looking forward to the, the the next ones that 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 should soon occur but nice. i'm ready to i'm ready to go once that when that opportunity <laughs> comes <laughs> oh, i definitely believe that matt so what what are the subjects that you're that you love to talk about well my, public speaking <laughs> sure well that's what i was going to say my first is 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 that uh is that public speaking to overcome the fear but the second one that i really enjoy speaking on and 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 encouraging uh, individuals on, and I think could be very helpful for people is doing that job interview. I just life experience has taught me. I've been through many, many job interviews and I found putting together what I have, it has immensely helped me with any interview I do. I have had success, consistent success with the last X number of interviews that I have done, whether it was getting a follow-on interview, getting a job offer. It's been very, very successful for me. And because of all these life stories that have helped me get to the point that I'm at right now, I found that to be a good topic I can share with people, that this is what you can do to have a successful job interview. People get people fear that I know. Again, I was actually just to share a little bit more about myself. I, I'm prior military. I was in the Air Force for seven years, and when I got out, I was really naive when it came to job interviews, resume writing. I knew absolutely nothing because in the service, I didn't have to worry about that. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. once you get out and you're a civilian, you're on your own. And you got to do it. So <laughs> I learned the hard way. I went through a lot of interviews that didn't go so well. But over the years, and 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 I, even though I've been with my organization as long as I have, because I've had, I've been fortunate, fortunate to work with the people who I enjoy working with. There's been multiple job promotions along the way. There's been other opportunities I've been able to look into, but I've always felt that the place I work at has been the best place. It takes takes really good care of me. But I've been fortunate, even though I've stayed in the same organization, I've had that opportunity to continue to build my resume, to continue to interview. And because of all that I've learned, and I'm looking at myself now versus how I was 16 years ago, I have a lot to share on that. And so that's why I've made that the second subject that I like to speak on, that nice. I like to I like to share with people about, because I know that's something that people could benefit from. Because it certainly has benefited me. And I hope that hearing my story, maybe not, there could be some others that won't go through the same challenges that I went through, having to, having to work my way up to, 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 to becoming a decent interviewer. Nice. Well, you know, it, 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 if I hear you talk about it uh, and being patient about it as well, I think that many high schools and universities uh, would definitely benefit, uh, at least the students would definitely benefit from your ex expertise on that. Uh. Yes, sir. 
Nice. And I, and I actually would like to correct one other thing, though, that you asked me if I had any speaking engagements going on right now. It's because I've been so busy getting ready for this big event that I, I have a tendency to just look at May, May 4, but I'm actually going to Jekyll Island. It's a uh, it's a conference that I'm going to be speaking at. It's it's a work conference, of course, but I'm going to be speaking on stage in front of 100 plus people and do I feel nervous about it? I, I won't lie. I, I do feel a little nervous, but I know I'm ready to go and I know I'm ready to present. And there's nothing like getting on that stage and speaking. Yeah, indeed. So what's uh, one final question before we, sure. we end uh, the episode? Sure. If you talk if 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 you're thinking about your your uh one of your most recent presentations, what part gives you the best feeling is it just before you're going on stage or going to present is it during or is it afterwards i feel that the most rewarding part of it is during the presentation and the reason being is and the beginning is the anticipation and that's something else i also let people know is a good strategy that anticipation, you don't want to be feeling that so much. You want to just relax, take a break. I always, if I have a, a session at two o'clock, I always make sure I take my lunch at 12 and just step away, go outside, read a book, a, a, dinner, a book for your entertainment, something that takes your mind off it. So at the beginning, I'm not going to be thinking about it. I'm just thinking about it when it's showtime, but that's because I'm ready to go. The, the end is rewarding don't get me wrong when people tell you good job and, and 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 fantastic presentation that is a good feeling too but doing the presentation itself is the most rewarding feeling because it's like when you're mentioning judo you're in the game this is game time this is show time you're on that stage or you're in that conference room at the head of the table and you're presenting. I always feel you're going to feel that bit of nerves, that that nerves in the beginning, but it's like taking the cork off the champagne bottle. The liquid's out, you're presenting, and you're delivering, you're communicating, you're doing everything you've prepared X amount of time to do. So going through that, going through that start to finish, there is nothing there is nothing more rewarding than in that given time. And then when people have questions, being able to respond appropriately to the questions they have. That's why my answer is during the presentation, Erwin. There's yeah, nothing no. like it. <laughs> I can totally I can totally relate to that. I can even pinpoint it a little bit more uh, as a matter of fact. You know, there's this NLP quote that says uh, the feedback uh, you get is a result of your behavior. Right? Yes. Me and that's for me that's the most rewarding part doing a presentation when i'm doing my best to get a point across and i'm getting the feedback that they get it that the message has been delivered that's right and that particular part for me is the most rewarding part of uh presenting you know getting the feedback sure. from the audience that the point you want to get across is delivered and they get it that's right and as long as i'm not getting the feedback i'm changing my behavior i'm staging my approach until i get that feedback sure and that's yes. that's that's the most rewarding part of the whole presentation yeah i i i'm with you i understand what you're saying and and that feedback then is just going to help you become even better the next time my boss and i and we've been doing it for 15 years Anytime I present afterwards, he will always give me some feedback. Of course, back in the day, a decade ago, there was a heck of a lot more feedback he had to give me then versus now. He says, Matt, there's nothing more I can teach you. But I'm like, no, Rick, there's always there's always feedback you give me that I find beneficial. And I always make sure I write that down. And having that feedback is only going to make it, it better. And then that next meeting, that next speech, it's going to be even that much better. So, again – very i appreciate you sharing that or once it's good stuff yeah thank you so uh matt 
if uh, I'm afraid we could talk for hours on this subject. Yes, Dan. <laughs> don't disagree. If, <laughs> yeah. don't. if you could share just a little tip or a little piece of wisdom with the audience um, sure. about public speaking or following your passion or whatsoever you want to share with them, what would it sure. be? Sure. My tip would be, Erwin, is practice, practice, practice. When you have a speech to do, whatever it may be, practice it. Give your Carve that time out of your calendar to practice. I know it might not be easy to, to make that time to do it, but believe me, the time you spend practicing it is going to make it so much more worth it when the time comes to deliver it. Yeah, definitely. I wouldn't agree with you uh, more. So if people want to know more about you or connect with sure. you or follow you, uh, man, how can they do that? Certainly. Well, I have got, I have, I have a LinkedIn. It's, it's Matthew Taylor dash B eight, eight, nine, a B 54. Also my, I have my Yahoo account email address that I I'm on. It's Matt Taylor. So that's Matt two T's. Taylor 969 at yahoo.com. Those are the two links, two areas that I, I check the most. Nice. And is, is your Yahoo account, is that with a dot between the two T's and the, the last T from your Not tape? on the Yahoo. It's just Matt Taylor 969. Okay. So three T's in a row. Yes, sir. Three T's in a row. <laughs> just yes. to be sure. Perfect. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, Matt, uh, I want to thank you for being my guest. Uh, I really love the conversation. I wish you all the best with your future presentations. I know you'll nail them. And uh, let's definitely keep in touch. Certainly will, Erwin. Thank you again. I appreciate you allowing me the opportunity to be on your show.